good Friday afternoon, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm glad to have y'all. Glad to be here. Happy Valentine's Day. Today is Friday, February 14th. Uh, Lover's Day, the day for love. I try to love every day of my life, so every day is Valentine's Day for me. Y'all know me. I'm always doing my love thing. So, hope, faith, and charity, and the greatest of these is love, so says the Lord. So, we're going to uh, exude and sort of practice a lot of love today. And as you all know, we've been keeping up with our Black History Facts today. So, nonetheless, I have uh, some Black History Facts for y'all also. But I'm incorporating Valentine's Day. Today is also National Cardio Rehab Week. So, I just came from my cardio rehab class about an hour ago. So, we celebrated that by wearing red. And, you know, just trying to be positive and upbeat about heart disease. So, it's also National Heart Disease uh, Month or Week, I believe it is. But to, today and yesterday was National Cardio Rehab Day. So, we've been wearing red all week and wearing uh, spirit colors for, you know, if you had a school color or whatever. So, we've done some quite some interesting things. I have met some beautiful, wonderful people in my program. As I shared with you before, my program is uh, 12 weeks long, and I am into my first month, a little over the first month. It's been a tedious thing, uh, but a worthwhile and something I'm going to stick to. So y'all continue to pray for me uh, in regards to getting through that class. And for all the other people uh, that have that are going through, I've had a few people to graduate the class since I've been there. But today is National Cardio Rehab Week, so kudos to everybody in my class and for people all around the world I'm sure this goes on all around the, throughout the country if not all over the world where people have these um, cardio rehab programs and I say thank God for them because I can attest to the fact that they are necessary and very very helpful and hats off to whoever it is that came up with it. The wonderful doctors and nurses and physical therapists that get in there and do the work to help those of us who have fallen to heart disease, and I encourage you to do what your doctor say do. Uh, all those kind of things, eat, you know, as right as you can. And y'all know I'm a cook, so I cook everything. So I've got to the point now. I still cook what I cook, but then I still try and eat as healthy as I possibly can, according to what the doctors and nurses tell me. So, uh, happy cardio national uh, heart association month or week. And we should do this year-round because people do have those kind of diseases year-round because I know mine is not going to just up and go away. It's something I'm going to have to live with, uh, and I can live with it just as well as anything else. And I thank you all for your prayers and your thoughts and for your encouragement regarding that. Now, let's get back to Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Pick up your phone, call somebody, tell them Happy Valentine's Day. Or get out your cell phone. This is my house phone. Or take out your cell phone and text somebody and tell them Happy Valentine's Day. And I had my phone out to do it this morning, but I had to dash out for my class. And I've still got my calls to make, so that's why I've got my phone out right here. And then the other thing, y'all know my children always call. So check your phone out. If you didn't send cards to anybody, if you got their phone number, just give them a phone call or text, just text them, text them a, a little heart. You don't even have to say anything if you don't want to. Okay, and then the other task at hand is to go ahead and give you a few black history tips, as promised. Okay, today, I'm, these are just random facts, uh, tips, and knowledge that I'm giving. It's no, in no special order. I don't have any real theme to it. The only theme to it is that this is Black History Month, and I am uh, chomping at the bit every day to celebrate and to share the accomplishments of African Americans in this country. So, first on board is somebody I know most of us know, and if we don't, then how about let's introduce you to Muhammad Ali. And of course, he is deceased at this time, but Muhammad Ali was the first person to regain his heavyweight boxing championship three times. So that is no noteworthy, and it's something that went down in history, and I'm sure if he's not already in the Hall of Fame, he will soon be in the Hall of Fame. Okay, now, these beautiful black and white 8x10s were given to me 
a long, 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 long time ago uh, when I was working. I think I might, I don't know if I shared this or not, but when I worked, I was responsible for a special emphasis program, which means that I had to have a celebration for all cultures. And Ebony sent me these pictures here, and I've had them ever since. And I keep them at, as part of my collection, and I still share them throughout this envoy that I can now get to share with you on YouTube. Okay, on the back of here is Mr. Crispus Adams. He's a hero of, Boston, of the Boston Massacre and the first American to shed blood in the American Revolution. Now, you know, older, our older listeners, I'm sure you remember these people. Younger people, this is something that you're going to learn. Hopefully some of this is being taught in the schools. And if you have a class project or something, you need some information, tell your mom, your dad, whoever looks at uh, the channel, tell them to send me a note. I'll be glad to help you with some information. And even if I could send you some stuff, now don't flood me out with it because I'm not going to be mailing stuff all over everywhere. But if I can, I'll try to direct you in the right path or give you the information that I have. And if I have extra copies of things, I don't mind sending them if I have them on hand. Okay. Okay. Now, this next young lady, she's in a uniform. She's Josephine Baker, a very famous person, a dancer and singer who settled in uh, Paris and received the French Legion of Honor. Now, she was an American, but she, you know, performed for the uh, servicemen at the USO Club and stuff like that. So, Josephine Baker, a beautiful young lady. Okay. And, um, just somebody that we look up to. We need to know these things about people in general when they make contributions because certainly not just in the African-American community, but for the community at large. Okay, this next individual, I'm sure you probably have heard of her. Her name is Mary McLeod Bethune. And again, those of us who've been around for a few minutes, I know we heard this throughout our elementary school days and high school days. She was the founder of Bethune Cookman School and advisor to the, and to the U.S. presidents, not to the president, but to U.S. presidents during the time uh, she was around. She lived, um, let me see, from 1875 to 1955. Highly educated, very giving, sharing individual. So we salute Miss Mary McLeod uh, Bethune. Uh, McLeod Bethune. There are some of you who may have graduated from this college, so I, I don't know what you, I don't know what the mascot or anything like that, but here's to you. For all of those of you who graduated from this great college, then hats off to Miss Cookman. I'm sorry, to Miss, uh, Miss, what? I want to, the name of the school is Bethune Cookman College. Her name is Mary McLeod Bethune, so we uh, salute her on today for Black History Month. Okay. Now, our next individual is somebody, I'm sure, most of these people are, and some of the younger people who are in college or who do their, who do their due diligence and study history, you may know each one of these people I presented. Now, this next young man, he, isn't he dapper looking, just dressed all up and looking good? His name is Marcus M. Garvey, okay? He was the founder of Universal Negro Improvement Association and supporter of the African liberation. So in that regard, he made a great contribution to the African American community. Okay? So that is Mr. Marcus Garvey. And this next young lady, beautiful, just absolutely gorgeous, beautiful. Um, she is the first black cabinet member and the first black woman to be an ambassador. And her name is Patricia Roberts Harris. And I'm sure a lot of you may recognize Miss Patricia Roberts Harris. Okay. I got a couple more here that I'm going to share. Oh, Lord, I know y'all. Everybody should even, because we still, oh, we do, ooh. I know we know this gentleman here. Anybody that ever took a literature class or an English class, I hope we all did at some point, young and old, even now that you're in school, you probably hear this name, Mr. Langston Hughes. He's our premier poet and playwright, and uh, Mr. Langston Hughes was with us uh, until 1967 
which is the year that I graduated in high school. Now, I know everybody that's watching has heard the name Langston Hughes. If not, just go to the library, Google him, and you will see some of uh, his poetry and some of uh, things that he wrote through the years. So, Mr. Langston Hughes. And uh, this next gentleman that I'm about to introduce, he's still with us. Uh, the Reverend Jesse L. Jackson, he was the foundation of Operation Push and the first black to organize two major campaigns for the presidency of the United States. So there is the Reverend Jesse L. Jackson. Like the uh, Reverend Jackson is still around. He's still active in politics and no, I'm sorry, not necessarily politics, but he's a civil rights leader, so he's still out there. Uh, he's up in age now, uh, as, as most of us, or a lot of us, not most of us, or as a lot of us are. But uh, Jesse Jackson is one of the people that marched for portrait Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. How about that? Wouldn't he just be next? So this picture here is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who uh, passed away in 1968. He was a civil rights leader, founder of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. The youngest at the time that this was printed, he was the youngest Nobel Peace Prize recipient. And anybody that is breathing now or was breathing back at that time, you know who Dr. King is, I'm sure. Because his speeches, uh, his nonviolent uh, way of doing things, all of that still lives with us to this day. We still live by some of the principles that he taught when he marched uh, throughout the world and, of course, throughout this nation. And I am proud to say I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and that is the home place of Dr. Martin Luther King. Now, as a child, um, I got to see Dr. King, but you know how children are. I mean, we didn't place no emphasis on it, but I used to hear about it because, uh, like I said, I graduated from high school in 1967, so I heard his name, and my grandmother used to take us down town to his church because she was a Methodist uh, uh, church goer so she took us and I went to church with her quite often and we sometimes we go downtown to Dr. King's church as well so uh, hats off to this awesome awesome man that is responsible for so many things as far and, and you know what I love about what he taught now you know some people are always going to have some negative to say and my thing is this if you got something negative to say Please, in the back of your mind somewhere, come up with something positive as well. Because I think, for the most part, there are more positive things about people than there are negative ones. So let's try to be, uh, and we, we, you know, we know what he stood for. We know what he did for this country. We know what he did for this world. And Dr. King, thank you for everything that you did to his family, to his daughters. I think one of his sons are still living to this day. So go ahead and... and um, Research, Google, whatever you have to do, you can pick either one of these people. This is to the children who are may have some type of uh, of Black History Month um, paper to do. My children did last year, and I had a really wonderful time helping them out. So you could any one of these people that I have mentioned here today could be the topic of your discussion for your paper. Okay, this next young man is in the sports world. Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis lived through 1981, so it hasn't been all that long ago since he passed away. But Joe Lewis was the heavyweight boxing champion for how many years? 12 years, people. This man held that title for 12 years. Can you imagine that? The longest reign of any heavyweight champion, so he bears that distinction. He held the tight, that title as heavyweight boxing champion longer than anybody else that was in the boxing game. Okay, so Mr. Joe Lewis. Now, let's see. Dr. Charles Drew, pioneer in blood plasma research and blood banks. So when you talk about blood plasma and blood banks, then you can take your head off to Dr. Charles Drew. Nice looking young man, smart. He had a lot going on, did a lot for mankind in general, okay? Now, this is one of our founding fathers, a uh, Dr. Frederick, I say doctor, Dr. Frederick Douglass, who was an abolitionist, editor, and orator. He was one of the great, and you all know 
or to people who speak. He was one of the greatest speakers around. And he spoke very well. And through his speaking, he brought about a lot of change in things. Okay, so this would be a great person to research and present a project on. You could do the pictures. You could do his bio and even some uh, illustrations. Uh, now, I don't know what they require these days on book reports and things like that. But for, you know, for the... Uh, the the primary schoolers and for the junior high i love to work on those projects because the high schools they get more up to the college level stuff which is okay but the thing is this would be a great project to do uh dr frederick douglas okay now my grandmother would love this person you used to hear her talk about I used to rather hear him mention him, Bishop Richard Allen, because he was the founder of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. My grandmother was a Methodist member of a church, and she used to take me to, to church all the time. So I remember her, can remember her mentioning uh, Bishop Allen. Okay, that's another good one, because, I mean, you could always research any of these people on here. Um... Okay, I didn't realize I feel like so many, but since I pulled them out, we're going to talk about them anyway. Okay, George Washington Carver, you know that he was a researcher and a scientist. Okay, you've heard of Dr. Ro George Washington Carver, I'm sure, over and over again, especially during Black History Month. Okay, on the back here, I've got Benjamin O. Davis Sr. He was the first black general in the United States Army, so Benjamin O. Davis. Okay, and you know, B.O. Davis Jr., I believe, was a part of the Tuskegee Airmen. But nonetheless, my son, Tony, I wish I had that picture right here where I could show you, but I don't have it. Tony drew this picture, this likeness. He took this picture, and he drew a likeness of uh, General Davis, and it looks just like him. Maybe when I do my next presentation, I'll show you a picture that Tony drew of him. Okay, now this man here... The last, but certainly not least, um, William Edward Burghardt Du Bois. So, Dr. Du Bois, he was a scholar, civil rights activist, and co-founder of the NAACP. And, you know, he's a very heavy hitter. So, for those of you, uh, you know, modern day, the NAACP still exists. So, you can associate him with having found founded the uh, NAACP. So, for our youth, we have uh, youth groups that have uh, NAACP chapters. So, of course, Dr. Dubois was the founder, okay? Last but not least, we got a person that used to keep us toe-tapping and dancing, uh, Edward Kennedy Duke Ellington, none other than Duke Ellington. Duke Ellington would get that beautiful swing music. My husband and I... Uh, he was one of the ones that when we did our Saturday night music, we always listened, uh, most of the time heard something about Duke Ellington. So he was very, very popular. A lot of uh, band leaders and music musicians patterned themselves after him. So these are, that was about, what, 10 or 12? I've got books and books of African-Americans who make great contributions to these United States and into our lives. And they still, to this day, all these people here still affect our lives. So that's going to end my presentation for today for our, our Black History Month facts. So I'm going to run in the kitchen and do a very short, sweet, quick lunch meal. And this is one of those lunch meals that's going to have to last throughout the day because I'm going to go to the Arts Council a little bit later. So thank you all for listening to the um tips that I've just given. Thank you all for uh, your input, for the ones that I've already presented. And thank you all for listening and for being interested because this is very, very important information that if you're African American or not, this is still good information. You know, knowledge is power no matter whether it's, if it's good knowledge and worthwhile knowledge. Knowledge is power. You know these things. It rounds your intellect out. It gives you something to talk about or to, if you need to compare some things, or just something to marvel over. I love reading and learning new things. Even at my age, I still like to research and look at stuff uh, 
to be able to talk to other people about because we ought to be able to talk about something other than this negative stuff that goes on here every day. So we're going to continue to pray for all of our sisters and brothers in the mid. I mean, this weather is all over the place. It's, all, it's in the northeast, the southwest, everywhere. The rain, the floods, the ice storms. I mean, it's all over the place. As a matter of fact, yesterday the the uh, flooding was threatening. I just found out the other day that um, little uh, creek that runs through an area that's not even five blocks from here is rising. So that flooding, every time it rains, those little creeks and uh, those little waterways flood. They they flood out and then they come off into the neighborhoods and they create. Uh, issues for residents so we thank God for everything that he does on this earth and we know that we continue to pray and ask him to have mercy on us and to grant us that grace that he will do what he said he will do and I always pray when I'm praying no matter who I'm praying for or what I'm praying about I always pray for the will of God because I want to be in his perfect will so we can't always expect that every little thing that happens that it's going to always turn out good because it does not. We have to just pray and ask God to bring us through the day. So with that said, I'm going to get up here and uh, attempt to put together a heart healthy meal. Since I talked about cardio uh, week this week, we're going to try to do some things. And I'm going to be, I've got a little recipe that I'll probably try with y'all tomorrow. But today this is going to be short and sweet because guess what? I'm hungry. So love you guys. See you in the kitchen. Hey y'all, I'm back. Come on in. I'm in the kitchen now, so we're going to get this quick and fast and this healthy lunch meal going. I tell you what, I'm ready to eat like right now. Like this a lot yesterday, I'm ready to eat. So, what I've got going on here, this is some um, salmon. And what I've done is I've gone ahead while I was, uh, before I started taping uh, my Black History Tips, I went ahead and seasoned fish and I'll tell you what I exactly what I seasoned with in fact I'm gonna give you a little recipe to make your own little seasoning so but before I do that I'm gonna go ahead and get over here and put these this fish well you know I had to do my my, my annual <laughs> flop okay so what I'm going to do is get over here to the skillet and start putting in my fish and I'm gonna start it out on the skin side, okay? Let's get it going in there. And I've got in that pan a couple of tablespoons, of, well, one tablespoon of olive oil and one, I'm sorry, I use olive oil or corn oil and then a tablespoon of my uh, smart start. And that's my butter substitute, I guess I can call it, my butter substitute. So I've got, this is like five pieces of fish, but I went ahead and cut them in half because this is going to be like a fish and rice casserole. It's going to be a one dish meal when I finish with it. So hopefully I'll get it all in here and I will show you how this is going to play out. So when I do my cleanup, I'll just have that one container to clean up. And y'all know I like to uh, fry that fish skin sort of crisp if I eat my, I like to keep that skin on. I love it. I love, love, love it. Okay, so just get them in there and fry them about three minutes. Two and a half, three minutes on each side is all I'm going to do because I am going to run it through the oven for a minute or two. So, okay. That last little piece of shit right there. Okay. All right. Got the fish in. It's cooking nicely. And I'm going to use some green beans and some carrots. I've gone ahead and I've uh, steamed about two cups of carrots. I had some leftover green beans from Sunday or Monday, whenever I cook green beans, I got them left over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place those green beans in with the carrots. And we're going to have a carrot and green bean medley, and we're going to have the fish and rice casserole. And that's going to make for a very tasty little lunch meal, y'all. Okay? So we're just going to let that fish continue to cook. Okay, there it goes. Y'all can watch it cook while I go ahead. And I'll just uh, peep over here in my carrot and green bean pot. What I did, like I say, I went ahead and uh, get those uh, green beans. They're back there on that back burner. Just to get them into frame for you. 
get my rice out of the way because I've already cooked, uh, cooked the rice as well. Okay, there those green beans are. And all I did is just drop those green beans right on top of those carrots that I'd already cooked. Then to make this a pretty, pretty, um, nice little dish. And the and I, I didn't put any, I just boiled those carrots or steamed them. I didn't put any kind of seasoning in them at all because they put the seasoning off those green beans will do just fine. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and switch them back to the back burner because I need my rice back on the front burner. Okay. Get them going. And as soon as I get the fish done, what I'm going to do is lay that fish right on top of this rice. But before I do that, I am going to, well, I'm trying to find my, my spatula that don't make the noise, so for those of you that that noise gets on your nerves for that. Okay. Y'all know what? One of these days, I'm going to find the right, there we go, there we go. The right stand. We have tried Tony and I, but we have tried all these different stands, and she's had more luck with hers than I have with mine. Cause I, I broke hers, mine, everybody. So I'm gonna go out probably this weekend and try to find another. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this fish. Okay, and get it flipped over nice and like that. And then I'm y'all know I'm gonna start this and drop some onions in there. I'm gonna drop some onions in there. And we're gonna saute those onions because I'm gonna make like a almost like a little gravy. I'm gonna use the dripping out of the bottom of the pan. And uh it'll be somewhat of a gravy when I get it made, I'm gonna pour it all over the fish and the rice. And that'll help to season that rice because I'm not using now I season I did seasoned rice. I use Onion powder, garlic powder, uh, a little bit of lemon pepper, and I use the seasoning that I use to season my fish with. So we're going to let that cook there like that, and I'm going to go ahead and get my onions in. I think what I'll do is get my fish to the side here. Okay. If I get this camera one more time, y'all please come get me. Y'all help me out today. Now, y'all know it's Friday. You know what? There we go. Sorry about the camera work, y'all. Sue Chef didn't show up today. I guess she thought because it's Friday she was off. Making her so happy. Okay, there it is. I think I found a way to stabilize my camera. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rice. Like I said, I've already cooked the rice. I cooked it according to uh, the directions. Y'all know how to cook the rice. Twice as much, as much rice water as you do rice. I took this is like a cup and a half of rice that I'm using for this recipe and probably uh, just a little over a pound and a half of fish. All I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and transfer the rice over. I'll let y'all see it when I get it in there. I don't have all that space over here. Whew, it's good and hot too because I just just put it on to cook just before I came downstairs to give y'all black history tip. So all you got to do with that rice is just take it out of the pan after you cook it and put it right in the bottom of a baking pan. Okay? And this seed, I seasoned it up. I put a little bit of butter in there and then my usual suspect seasoning. So while those onions finish sauteing the fish finishes cooking, I'm just going to let the rice sit there in the pan. My beans are... And my carrots look like they're moving right along yet. We'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, I've got the um, onion sauteing still. Got my rice on standby. And what I'm going to do is just let those onions, I need those onions to cook. Just go ahead and get real translucent and pretty much done. Soft, rather. And then I'm going to, um, I put a little gold mountain season just to juice them up a little bit. And this is my seasoning that I told you I was going to give you a recipe for. Now this is like a couple of tablespoons of paprika, garlic powder, garlic, salt, 
onion flakes or onion powder. I poured in uh, lemon pepper seed. I put uh, about three tablespoons of that lemon pepper because you just want that to um, activate that season even more. And then what I did with that, now I told y'all about this gourmet seafood seasoning that I bought the other day from TJ Maxx because it didn't have quite all the flavor I wanted in it. I went ahead. That was one of those bogus calls. That's why I didn't answer. It's not the kids. It's called the Gourmet Collection. And uh, it's Fisherman's Seafood Spectacular. And it's by Dan Gold. So go on. If you're interested in buying this, it's pretty good. But if you want to, that's what I just added the extra stuff to mine. Y'all know me. I'm extra. So I'm going to go ahead and pour a little water in here. While I'm talking, that'll get my little gravy, so to speak going that I'm going to pour over this rice and fish. So, Dan Gold is D-A-N-G-O-L-D. D-A-N-G-O-L-D. Dan Gold. That's the name of the company. Now, this is current as of, to be still good, as of February 2022. So, you should be able to go online, Google this if you're interested in now getting this. This is a really good seafood season. And it is not, it does not have a lot of salt in it. As a matter of fact, I didn't read the, um, ew, wait a minute, let's see. Sodium is 80, looks like either 30 or 80 milligrams. But anyway, if you're interested in it, go to TJ Maxx. They might still have it. Or if you want to order it, go ahead and um, order it online. So the reason I'm recommending this is that it is a good seafood seasoning that's already mixed together. Now, I added extra stuff to mine because I'm extra. I put lemon pepper seasoning in there. That will give you the little bit of salt because I didn't add any salt to it. Lemon pepper seasoning is what I added and some paprika and some um, more garlic and some the uh, onion flakes. That's it. It makes a wonderful, wonderful seasoning for fish. You can season your fish, your shrimp. And so I'm seasoning my fish broth with it. I'll be right back. Let me go ahead and get this ready to pour over. Okay, here we go. Yesterday, unbeknownst to y'all, I made some uh, ranch dressing and I used Greek yogurt. Okay. This was something that the dietitian in my class at, at, for, at the hospital told me I could use. So I made um, some ranch dressing. I, I bought one of those packs of Food Line. Um, ranch dressing mix. It has a little bit of salt in it. It's not bad, but she recommended She said we could just use it. Just don't use it moderately, you know. So, because I want this broth going over this fish a little creamy. Y'all know there I go again. I'm always trying something new. I'm going to put a couple tablespoons of this in there. And because I know I made it with the Greek yogurt, it's not going to add any real bad stuff. Because I had some of this over my salad. So, I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons of that Greek yogurt in uh, the mixture. So that will give my dish a little bit more flavor. How about that? So, you know, I'm always coming up with ways to eat healthy and to keep it flavorful. Mmm, yum. That's not bad at all. It's not really salty. So what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to take my little pieces of fish and lay them right on top of uh, the rice. We can do this. My hands are clean. My hands are always clean, whether I'm cooking or not. I'm a hand wash person. I'm just going to lay this fish all the way through here on top of the rice. And this is me and Kareem's Happy Valentine's Day uh, <laughs> luncheon. He's going to be so excited. That little fella is hungry, honey. We both, he just got, oh, he works at PetSmart, by the way, y'all. So he's a working man, and he does his he does has a, a real estate thing going on. So, okay, got my fish laid out. If you want to put more fish on there, then just cook more than five pieces and cut it up. If you want ten pieces, I mean that's up to you. But I use a cup and a half of rice. So what I'm gonna do with my uh, drizzle here is I'm just gonna drizzle it all the way through. And that right, even after you eat the see, here's the thing about this even after you eat all the fish, 
out of there. That rice is still going to be good. So if you have some, and you know how with guys, honey, they're going to eat all the meat. So they'll be eating rice too because this, this is going to be really wonderful. This is going to be absolutely wonderful. Now, it's up to you. If you're ready to eat right away, go ahead and eat it because it's eat ready. If not, put it in the oven for about 15 minutes, about 400 degrees. And all that will do will allow it to heat all the way through and pull those juices up through that rice. And you'll have something good on your hands to eat. So those are my quick, hard, healthy uh, Friday afternoon meal along with my Black History tips. And happy Valentine's Day to you. If I get real, real smart and don't get too many other things going, I might make that uh, sweet potato pie thing. Now, the run's already requested again. And I thought, now, since it's Valentine's Day, y'all, I might go ahead and make one for my grandson. But I, I'm not, I, I can't let him, I mean, the only way he would know it, though, he'd have to be, he'd have to watch this video. But I'm not sure if he did or didn't. Mm. That, wow, that Greek yogurt is wonderful to make uh, your dressing out of. It cuts out a lot of stuff, sugars, starches, whatever. That Greek yogurt is just wonderful. I've, I've never used the Greek yogurt. It tastes like sour cream to me, so I love it. So anyway, we've got our dish, our fish casserole. It's ready to go. And like I said, I'm just going to run it through the oven for about 15 minutes. Just to let it heat through really, really good. So for all practical purpose, y'all, this meal is ready those good old carrots in there. There it is. That fish casserole. And it didn't take any time at all, y'all. Y'all can have this. If you do it straight through, you can have this on the table less than 30 minutes, y'all. I'm telling you right now, less than 30 minutes is how fast you can do it. So, for today's menu, it is lima i'm sorry i'm saying lima beans green beans and carrots and salmon and rice casserole so we'll say instead of just fish casserole we'll say salmon and rice casserole okay so we got this ready to go i'm gonna go like someone I'm put it in the oven just for about um 15 minutes to let it heat all the way through y'all and then we're gonna take it out. Oh, the other thing too, Kareem loves bread. So I'm cooking him a couple pieces of that uh, brioche bread, that crafted brioche bread. That bread is so good, y'all. Oh, mm. But I'm not eating bread a lot these days, just maybe a piece or two here and there. So thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for listening to the Black History Tips. And if you have some that you'd like to send my way, please do that. I will be glad to try to remember to share them with everyone so listen guys until i decide to cook something else again or bring forth some more black history tips i want to say love you guys keep those prayers going up now so the blessings will continue to go down and just remember throughout the country uh this weather is going through people are still being devastated all over the united states so continue to pray for our sisters and brothers for this weather and for other things that they're going through in their lives and of course you know we're still praying for Kobe's family that uh, situation is going you know all the things that are surrounding let's just pray for peace harmony and reconciliation reconciliation uh, in the light of the things that are going on still so love you guys keep those prayers going up now so the blessings will continue to come down and until I talk to you all again now to the loo